Rub for luck? I don't need luck for this. I am a highly skilled master cat thief. Watch! Puss in Boots The Last Wish is the perfect representation of the popular saying, a cat with nine lives. The plot is just so good that it sucks you right off the bat. We can all agree that there is no way DreamWorks would ever make a movie without sneaking in some hidden details and references. But perhaps a song. Who is your favorite fearless hero? Like always, we paid extra attention to the movie so you did not have to. Sit tight as in this video we will highlight everything you must have missed while watching Puss in Boots The Last Wish. Hold on, is the great Puss in Boots asking for help? Hey, help! You were right, the beer is disgusting. Gingerbread Man cameo. This is my job. No, this is my job. I'm double crossing the bears. No, I am double crossing the bears. They tried to hire me earlier today. It has been so long since we got to the last Shrek movie, but we know you have not forgotten about Genji. He is undoubtedly our favorite gingerbread man ever as he plays the secondary role of being Shrek's friend in the Shrek movies. By extension, he is also friends with Puss, so we were not surprised to see him make an appearance in Puss in Boots. At the beginning of the movie, Puss is crushed by a bell, and when he comes back to life, the doctor hits him with the terrible news that he is currently on his last life. Remember the scene that follows this revelation? We get all those wild flashbacks of how Puss has lost all of his eight lives. Somewhere in the scene, Puss is seen in front of an oven that is heating up beyond control. And guess who's standing right there next to him? Genji. We certainly hope Genji was fast enough to escape those flames. He's delicate, and the last thing we want is for Shrek to mourn the loss of a friend in the next Shrek movie. Your Puss in Boots? Not yet, but I will be. I'll come with, I'll come with you! Sorry, Pedro! Puss in Boots walks alone! The Wicked Witch. That makes eight, Puss. You are down to your last life. My prescription? No more adventures for you. Yes, she plays a very minor role in Shrek, but if you are a true fan of the Shrek franchise, then you should remember the Wicked Witch. Like Genji, she makes a very quick appearance in Puss in Boots. It was a blink and you miss it moment, so we are sure that only very few could catch it. In the same sequence where Puss gets the awful news of his mortality, he then walks out of the doctor's office. In this quick scene, we cannot help but notice that the Wicked Witch is seated calmly in the waiting room. It was very shocking to see because witches, especially the evil ones, are supposed to be powerful, at the very least, have the ability to cook up something healing, spell, or potion. We wonder what would be so serious that makes her need a doctor's appointment. Wait, what? What do you mean you didn't show up? Well, I knew I could never compete with your one true love. Dogs playing poker. Oh, look at her! Those eyes are even bigger than yours. Do whatever she wants, Puss. The fact that Puss has lost eight lives in a manner that was very careless and unnecessary makes him the king of mischief. Someone give Puss his crown, please. While taking a glimpse into the deaths of the king of mischief, we noticed a very striking scene where he was playing a game of poker with a group of dogs. Just like we all know that cats have nine lives, there is also an even more popular saying that cats and dogs do not make for the best of friends. With this in mind, Puss was definitely asking for it as soon as he decided to play a catch, such a high stakes game, with not just one or two, but at least four dogs. Had the stupid mistake, the scene makes us understand that he goes on to cheat while playing the game. Bad puss bad. The result of this is an attack from the dogs which kills puss. Anyways, it would interest you to note that aside from this scene highlighting the tense relationship between cats and dogs, it is also a reference to a series of paintings. This series of paintings by Cassius Marcellus Coolidge is called Dogs Playing Poker. They were painted in 1903, and a few of them were commissioned by Brown and Bigelow to advertise cigarettes. Thus our weight in gold. I did, didn't I? Ever hear of the Midas touch? Ah, oh, cool dibs! <laughs> Pinocchio cameo. We must get this to the trophy room. You know, it took a lot of murdering to get this map. It all started. Take it to the trophy room! Big Jack Horner is not just one of the villains in Puss in Boots. We dare say that he is the least liked. He is a feared crime lord and pastry chef with a penchant for stealing various magical items and creatures. He has quite a collection of stolen things from so many movies, but we will get back to that in a moment. At some point in the movie, Jack Horner tells his origin story and there is an interesting reference to a puppet boy whose nose grows longer with every lie. In this scene, we see a young Jack giving a performance but the crowd is distracted. They all run to go watch the performance of a magic puppet boy. If you look closely, you will see that this is none other than Pinocchio. Dude, you didn't win. You of all people should have a wish. I already have a comfy sweater and two best friends. I got everything I could wish for. Shrek and Donkey cameo. What happened to your sword? Got rid of it, you know. Made things too easy. I needed a challenge. 
Yeah, you look pretty challenged back there. Everyone knows that Shrek and Donkey are the stars of the Shrek universe. Sorry, Fiona. Because of this, it is almost impossible for any Puss in Boots movie to be complete without a Shrek and Donkey cameo. In the scene where Puss is taking a look back on his life, we see brief shots of his most memorable moments. One of those moments is a scene that was taken from a previous Shrek movie. In this shot, you can see Shrek, Donkey, and Puss silhouetted against a glowing moon. This scene is no doubt playing homage to the iconic movie that birthed the Puss in Boots spin-off movies. From Jinji to Pinocchio, Shrek, and Donkey, you must have realized by now that there are so many Shrek references in Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. At the end of the movie, you can also see that Puss is sealing far away. We can only hope this means that the producers have something big in store for us with Shrek 5. It has been a long wait, DreamWorks. Stop teasing and just give us the movie. We'll get you that wish. Come on, boys. Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Eh, you know that suit Jack Horner wears? Yeah. I'm gonna have one of them. Yeah. Only mine will be purpler. One thing that makes Puss in Boots The Last Wish so memorable is that its villains were just as much a force to be reckoned with as they were interesting to watch. Sure, not everyone would like the fact that lovable characters like Goldilocks from another story were rewritten to be a villain in this one, but with the way it all plays out, they eventually grow on you. All through the movie, we see Goldilocks and the Three Bears give Puss such a hard time. But the truth is, we really couldn't count Goldilocks as a bad guy in this story. She's just a girl willing to do everything to get her family back. Whoa! Hey, look! The bat is going all frizzly! What did you do? Give it me! Hey. No, 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 no! The Wicker Man and Cage reference. <sighs> You're the smash, I'm the grab. I hold the map. You got it? One of the most hilarious and rib-cracking scenes in Puss in Boots' The Last Wish is the one where a baby bear gets stuck in a cage of bees. He screams, not the bees. When we heard that, we knew that this was not just a random scene that the producers came up with. This scene is definitely a reference to the movie, The Wicker Man. In this movie, Nicolas Cage is forced to put his head into a mini cage and is forced to endure and scream, not the bees, as they put a swarm of bees into the cage. It gets even more interesting when you remember that Nicolas Cage turned down the offer to voice the role of Shrek. If you ask us, we think the producers are still not over Nick Cage, and they kind of want us to know it. Oh, them cats ain't gonna risk their lives for this daft little pup. You're just saying that because you want to eat him. I do not. Jack Horner's Collection. Little Jack Horner didn't have any magic. He was a pathetic, buttered baker's boy. When it comes to Easter eggs, Jack Horner's collection was a gift that just kept on giving. He has so many objects that he has collected and stored away in his trophy room. What you might not have realized is that these objects are all artifacts and icons of other movies. Where do we even begin? First was the map to the shooting star, the ethical bug, which is a nod to Jiminy Cricket and Pinocchio, the phoenix, which is identical to Fox and Harry Potter, Captain Hook, Cinderella's glass slippers, and the poisoned apples that may or may not have been used on Snow White. There was also the spindle that pricked Princess Aurora in the Sleeping Beauty movie and the bioluminescent enchanted flower from Beauty and the Beast. We certainly do wonder how he managed to get his hands on the Excalibur sword of King Arthur. If Jack was dedicated enough to go all out to acquire these objects from other movies, we are not surprised that he struck home too. We couldn't help but notice the statue of Bastet, a worship deity in the Shrek universe, in his possession. Quite the collection if you ask us. But Big Jack Horner does not seem to agree. According to him, these are merely trinkets when compared to the awesome power of the wishing star that would grant him all the power he desires. I'll get you, my kitties, and your little dog too. What a list! Did you come across any secrets that we missed? Do let us know in the comment section. Don't forget to like this video, hit that subscribe button, and the notification bell so you do not miss any out on upcoming videos like this. Who's that? He's here for me.